What are the best ways for directors and actors to unpack a screenplay? You know, the first thing is that you want to meet and talk with the actor as a director and before you cast them, you know, hopefully. And, um, and I'm talking about in terms of like stars who are going to be made an offer. You're not going to have a chance to necessarily audition them. Or, but if you're, if you're dealing with a name sort of actor, you want to make sure you can sit and talk with them and just know you, you're going to make the same movie uh, because it's really a bummer when you get on the set and you realize this actor sees a whole other movie and you may not win that battle because it's, <laughs> they are oftentimes more important to the studio than the directors are. So, um, so it's important to have the dialogue going and just be sure like we see this movie the same way and we feel its character the same way. Um, so that, you know, that's an important thing. And most good actors will do their own breakdowns. Used to be like, well, years ago when I was getting started, I used to write biographies for every character I'd written. You know, way into their childhoods, what formed them. I, mean, I would spend weeks and weeks and weeks doing this. And I would give them to the actor, and I would say, look, this is not a Bible. Um, this is just something for you to reference, and if there's something you want to use, great. If not, throw it away. And usually they were grateful. Sometimes they were like, yeah, okay. Hmm. Um, but I've learned now that Good actors will do that already, and they want to bring their own thing to this character's backstory. They don't necessarily want my take, the writer's take, or the director's take. They want to find their own way into this character, the same way I have to find my own way into a story. So unless it's something really critical about their backstory that, that informs you know, an important behavioral point in the, in the movie, um, I don't do that anymore, because I know they're going to, they're going to fill in those blanks for themselves. And... Uh, uh, you know, I think really it, it's just about discussion, most of all. You know, I do rehearse, but for me, a, a valid rehearsal is just as much just sitting over dinner and just talking about where we think this character has been and what we think they want, all those things as a writer you do, um, where the character's going. And um, we just sort of discuss different approaches and uh, so, you know, hopefully by the time you start shooting, you have answered each other's questions about the direction of this character, how this character is going to become, you know, come to life on screen. And so, you know, from there, I don't tend to do heavy blocking rehearsals, like Sidney Lumet famously rehearses for two weeks like a play, you know, marks out the locations, the props, you know, furniture, and he has the actors go through every scene, start to finish like a play. And that works great for him, and, and obviously, you know, seeing the movies are fantastic. Um, I, I don't want to um, pin it down that much. And also, I've, I've rarely had the luxury of time. I mean, you know, I'm trying to make it sound like uh, I've made a choice about the rehearsal, but really it's mostly because I only get a couple of days tops, and I want to rehearse with the... You know, I don't really do... We do like a table read with everybody, but then I want to break them up into groups um, and... and just kind of work more intimately with them. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of it's discussion and, and how to, um, what, what, what the big moments are in the script. Uh, we like to talk about, I like to talk about the scenes with the actors. And I like to ask them questions. Um, I like to, instead of coming in and saying, well, here's what I think about this character. I think this character. I like to say, well, what do you think you're after in this scene? You know, uh, and I like to say, what do you think is the most important thing you say in this scene? And I learn a lot from that because oftentimes it's not what I think at all, but it's better than what I thought or just different in a way that I can say, oh, this is where he's going to go with that. That's great. Um, so I, I tend to now just be much more interested in what the actor feels about it uh, and, and what their take is on where a scene is going to go. Or, uh, and, you know, just getting off the, your, the topic of your question for a bit, but just in terms of casting... You know, it's so important because of this process to cast that right actor. You know, and, and you know the old joke, it's 50% of the director's job, whatever it is, but it's, it's like 90% of the director's job. To get that right actor in that, in that role. Um, because it's not my job as a director to teach someone how to act or to teach them how to be in this role. Um, they got to come with their game and they're going to they're gonna play to win. And so you've got to be sure that that actor is, is, sees it the way you do and is going to give you what, you, what, the, what the role needs. Because if not, you know, you really can't reasonably expect the actor to completely, okay, no, I need you, to, this is all wrong, 
you're going to come, come at this from a completely different direction. That's rarely going to work. You know, most actors are just not going to respond to that. And so you're sort of stuck with what, what their interpretation is. So casting, most important thing in the world <laughs> to, to do. And with this backstory that you would prepare, it sounds like a lot of it, maybe the audience wasn't even privy to some of what it was. The, you know, most, none of it. You know, it, it's really just about giving the actor a sense of uh, their own context. Uh, but I don't do it anymore. Um, like I said, because it's, it's just uh, the actors kind of do it for themselves, and I don't want them to feel like I'm imposing this idea on them. You know, if they need something from me, they know they can come to me and say, "What do you think?" You know, and that's that's great. But for the most part, uh, I, I, I trust them to you know figure them their characters out. What's your process for reading a screenplay that someone else wrote? Um, you know, I try to imagine myself as the viewer. Um, and uh, yeah, I try just to clear my mind of all the things that I know about how movies are made and just try to concentrate on the story and the characters. I usually have to read a script twice to, to really get it. Um, uh, and if I, if I choose to do it, then you know, many more times. But uh, sometimes I'm, I'm more able to find flaws in other people's scripts than in my own. So I can, if someone, a friend of mine gives me a script to read, I can give him fantastic notes and feedback, but I, I can't do it on my own script. I have to have somebody else look at it and tell me where I've gone wrong. You know, this strange blindness that you get. What's the wrong way for a director to read a screenplay? I, I guess, you know, I mean, there's, there's probably a couple of wrong ways, but uh, the, the, the first wrong way is to read it like a person in the film business. You know, you want to try to read it like an audience, which is difficult because it's got nomenclature and technology and, and you know, words and technical stuff in it that doesn't make it feel like it's a reader-friendly experience. But um, the challenge, I think, is to try to f just forget everything you know and read this thing and just have a visceral emotional reaction to it. Do I feel for these characters? Do I want to tell the story? Do I want to find out what happens after this is over? Um, those are the kinds of correct things, uh, you know, to, to bring to it. So I guess uh, the incorrect things are, you know, just if you're too conscious of the process, that's a big scene, man. How, how am I going to do that? That's like a thousand extras. You know, are they going to give me the money to do that? You know, I'm going to need a crane here. You know, that's for later. Um, you just want to try to, you can, do I connect with this on any kind of human level? You know, do I care about these people? So then the latter is how someone in the industry would, an industry read would go instead of, yeah, for lack of a better term, I realize this sounds very woo-woo, but a heart read. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a good way to put it. It's, you know, it, it really is. You, you hope. When I write a script, I, I, I use very few technical terms. Uh, I make it very spare. Uh, my paragraphs are no more than four lines each. I, I never, like, when I open up a script... And I see a paragraph this long, oh God, you know, it's like dense, it's hard to read. So I try to make everything spare, reader friendly. And I try to be careful not to ever describe something that can't be photographed. You know, I don't like to say, uh, you know, this character you know, walks in the room and uh, she feels totally out of place. What does that mean? You know, what's the behavior that tells us she feels totally out of place? Is she checking herself in the mirror a little bit? You know, that's the kind of thing I want to put in my script and not just leave for a director to figure out. Like how, you know, the director's going to be me, so I especially don't want to have to you know, figure that out. So that's something I always tell writers, you know, just don't write something you can't photograph. And um, so hopefully if someone reads my script, they're not going to be too bogged down in shots and all the technical stuff that gets in the way of the storytelling in that format.